Here we go. Ha ha. Is it, uh, <laughs> okay, we're here. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Or, I guess. I might be like, I might have started like half a second before you. So yeah, I'm yeah. I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll, I'll cut the little the little bit at the at the beginning for this. So it's. it's <laughs> I always think of the Predator Two episode where like it's just off like slightly. I know, I know that one. That one still kills me, but I I don't think hey, I had I, that problem again. So no, you've done a great job, and I gotta be I gotta make it clear to everyone. Diego does all the heavy lifting on this show. This is why I, just, I want death. <laughs> I just show up and act like a boob for like two hours, and then like go like, all right, you deal with it, and then I leave. Yeah, but now we get to act like cats for two hours. Yes. Yeah, this is the Cats commentary. Oh, yes. So just a quick little intro. We'll tell you when to press play and why our viewing experience might be a little different than yours. Or not. I know a lot of people that just don't want to own this movie, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I can't imagine why. <laughs> so Matt and I are watching on the on the HBO Max app, which no one has any mixed feelings about, obviously, this year mm-hmm. in particular of 2020. Uh, also, happy New, New Year's Eve. Nolan. <laughs> so, happy New Year's Eve if you're watching this or listening to this on the day this is released. But, uh, <laughs> we're, yeah, we're here to talk about cats. And uh, uh, on the HBO Max version, you're going to want to jump ahead to 37 seconds. If you're watching it on a computer, uh, then you can just do that manually. Uh, if, if you're watching it on a TV, or specifically the Roku app, you might have a little bit of a problem there. But Yeah, you you want to just be seeing, I, I believe, I, I think we're seeing the same thing, that the Universal logo is like just starting to come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's what you want to see to the people at home. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's not going to be 100% perfect, but it's cats, so nothing's ever going to work out normal ever, with this film. Ever. <laughs> it's, nothing will ever be normal again. This is our New Year's Eve special. Welcome to celebrate the as we all <laughs> ascend. <laughs> we we are all jellicles tonight. It's been it's been a tough year for everyone. Um and not not Why to, what happened? <laughs> not, <laughs> not to be one of those like, ooh, twenty twenty people because it's clearly just like an avalanche of systemic issues in society mm. that like kinda just like percolated together this year. Um but you know, let's let's all just kick back, relax, and uh, head into the jellical choice. Do you, do you have any final thoughts before we press play, Matt? Um, let's just hope we're we're recording on the twenty eighth. Let's just hope twenty twenty takes a fucking break for three days and nothing extreme happens. Yeah, that definitely won't happen. But the last three <laughs> last three days, there was a bombing in Nashville. <laughs> And then, like, Trump vetoed that bill and then reversed his own veto, so... Yeah, well, we have, I have a whole bunch of thoughts about that f- fucker, <laughs> like, it's been, this whole thing, so... And he's still refusing to concede. I know, it's, I know. It's goddamn December. I know, but in all fairness, it's not like no one saw that coming. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, to be absolutely fair. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to hear from people I'm trying to cut out of my life that there is some evidence of voter fraud if you really look at it. And then they, they send me to an, a link that was set up three days ago. No, no, for for me, like, I, I'm on the, uh, the liberal side of that, where it's just like, you know, heading into the election, I would tell people like you know there's no way he's going to concede and they're like no he has to it's illegal if he doesn't that's the rules it's the rules yeah and i'd be like here in the rule book yeah and then i you know (laughs) you just start pointing to literally any day of his presidency where it's like what what gives you the idea that he would have done that (laughs) yeah (laughs) but uh, oh people but all right you ready to press play yes okay so we're pressing play and three two one play play and fade in on the universal logo i really would have liked it if there was like a cat's version Giant. of the universal logo if they were doing like if it's the universal fanfare but it's just meow meow yeah and there's cat ears on the earth yeah oh my i would have but- lost my mind in the theater i mean i did you have but- to remember though this is an oscar play film <laughs> I guess that, From that's everyone's favorite. So bizarre. Tom Hooper. 
<laughs> this, is, this is his. What did he do before this? Amblin. Happy Amblin. Happy Amblin. Amblin. Yeah, woo. Happy Amblin. God damn! How did Spielberg not like like tackle someone and be like, "Take my goddamn company's name <laughs> off this movie"? Oh, oh, you hear the little meow right here. Um, but I, I, I've come to realize that no one in Hollywood actually likes Tom Hooper. <laughs> That's well, yeah. It seems like that. This movie seems like a prank on him. Mm-hmm. I actually have it muted because if I had the sound on, you would just hear the the fucking music on my recording. <laughs> Um, but I have subtitles on, so I'm going to miss a lot of, like, the ambient shit that... Because ta- there's so much... This movie's so goddamn noisy. <laughs> it's... Oh, my God. This is the biggest... This, all right. So we're, we're, like, cutting back between humans... Uh, an actual human being driving a car, and then these cat humans <laughs> is, like, a massive mistake <laughs> right off the bat. It's so... Like, you should have, like... It, like, we should have seen maybe cat tails, or hell, maybe start with real cats... And then they turn into cat people when, like, the music starts, you know? You're presuming that there would be some sort of forethought to any of this. Now, as we've come to understand, Tom Hooper had none of that. So the big problem, like, with with all the cat, like, mocap and stuff like that, which I am sure just will continue to look worse as time goes on. Um, You know, when you do mocap, you have to do, you have to get the actors to do, like, T poses to align with the computers and so the computers can reset and capture the next version of the performance or whatever right and he just never well, she, had them do that <laughs> she crawls out of the bag symbolizing rebirth yeah because uh, that's what this movie's <laughs> about life and rebirth yes uh, well, it's a mockery <laughs> for the <laughs> concepts of life <laughs> but uh fucking hell Wow, that's not great. Um, <laughs> I, I forgot how he's trying to do the thing of like shaking the ki- like like getting like handheld with it. Yeah, I I don't I, know I, why. Um, and there's no sense of scale. Like at times it looks like they're huge cats, and then other times it looks like they were tiny. And then it, sometimes when the car showed up, I mean the car's gone now, but like it looked like they were bigger than the car. And the car, I, if you actually pay attention, the car drove off and then just sat at the end of the intersection for, like, it didn't do anything. <laughs> I don't know if they just forgot to animate it, like, turning out of the shot or something. <laughs> but if you looked, it just sat there. Which uh, I'm willing to bet they ran out of time and money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because Tom <laughs> Hooper's was, ineptitude. Everyone working on this was trying to get fired. No, you know what? I am willing to give every single member of the crew credit except for Tom Hooper. Hearing the the nightmare war stories about him, I yeah. I get it. <laughs> I, I I totally get. It. I think the people that worked on this film understand now about Oh my god, that lady's hair. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> it's uh it, very not great. It was like flowing backwards there's no wind in the scene yeah it's i'm I'm already like regretting this idea but oh he's drinking out of a toilet <laughs> <laughs> well that's what cats do apparently yeah yeah uh that's why you close your toilet seats people uh, <laughs> although it's like this is supposed to be a fun number and it feels like they're gonna like skin her alive i know it's like, like... It, it looks villainous. They look like they're yeah. gonna skin her or eat her. There's a lot of that, which maybe was like his ch- a Tom Hooper choice to be like these cats should be fucking scary because you know cats can be scary to some people. You know, cats are like actually very violent, murderous <laughs> animals, and so maybe he was like, I want it to be a sinister world, and like she's an innocent entering. Although they keep fucking. Ugh. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mistopheles. God, I hate what they do with him in this, but... No, no, he, he gets oh an God. arc. He's the only character with an arc in this. I, I, I like him. Yeah, but he's also, like... They, I don't know. It's they, they, they cut, like, a lot of the, the stuff that makes him fun, which I think is, like... There's, like, kind of, like, a rivalry between him and the Rum Tum Tugger in the play. And there's kind of, like, you know, like, some gay subtext going on there, which is, like, fun. And, like, of course fucking Magical Mr. Mistopheles would be gay. <laughs> but uh, instead in this, he's, like, in love with Victoria. 
and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, we can't have anyone thinking this movie might be gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, here he comes. Yeah. In case, you didn't get, in, in case you didn't get that, a poster of Moriarty, which I guess London just has up for some reason, the Sherlock Holmes villain, changed into McCavity. <laughs> Yeah, why? What? What is that? Is it? Does it take place in the Sherlock Holmes universe? Then I, I don't know. I don't know what version of London this is. It's so weird. Where it's like it's like you want to be like okay, it's a fantastical version of London, but then there's like this weird gritty realism, and then it's like these people look like they survived like a fucking nuclear fallout and got hit with the forced evolutionary virus but mixed with cat DNA. <laughs> yeah, it's like Fallout. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Fallout musical. That would be something. And, you know, there's actually, like, that's not even that far off because, like, the, the play version, like, I'm basing a lot of what I'm saying off of the 97 video version, which is the version I've seen. <laughs> like, a big part of that is that they're, they'll, they'll keep, they're in a junkyard and they keep picking up the trash to, like, use as props. So when, like, ever they're talking about mice or something like that, a bunch of them will dress up as mice, but, like, it's all trash, right? Mm -hmm. And that's actually really creative. Instead of this, we'll we'll get to what the cat with uh, what the mice actually look like. And I don't really want to, but we'll get there. (laughs) Some of them have shoes that are also their skin. (laughs) Yeah, like, if you really want this to become a disturbing viewing more so than it already is, look at their feet. The feet are, like, are very, like, oh, no. (laughs) The feet and the hand, specifically, it's, like, Mm -hmm. watch how they track against the the floor movement. And it's, like, they're not in the same plane of reality. (laughs) And it's kind of, like, beautiful in a way. Cooper's really moving this camera around. Yeah. What is is up with him? What does he do? I don't know, because, like, I saw Les Mis and hated it. Mm Mm-hmm. Sorry, Abby, I know you're going to listen to this. Yeah, I I know there's one person in the world who defends that movie. (laughs) Um, I saw King's Speech and hated it, but, like, I also saw that in an age where I'm like, I don't really like this, but it won Best Picture, so it must be good. Yeah, I know. (laughs) You know? (laughs) And then, like, you kind of realize, like, oh, no, that's never uh, the case. Depravity. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, oh, I have to shout out the moment. I didn't bring it up, but when the Moriarty sign changed, that was the moment when, if you've listened to our Cats episode, when the little old couple was like, is that Judy Dench? <laughs> so That's I'll remember that forever. I do not forever. understand the choice of just like, because like McCavity's got like, a, you know, McCavity actually looks kind of cool in like the first few shots of this movie, mostly because he's hidden under his clothing. <laughs> and I feel like, yeah. They should have just done that. <laughs> like, give the cats fake cat clothing. No one would have complained. <laughs> Instead, we have this. Yeah, it, it honestly looks like uh, my sister saw, like, a local community theater production of Cats once. And she said it was, like, one of the worst things she's ever seen. <laughs> And, you know, they can't really afford great costumes, so they're all just in leotards. And it looks really cheap and bad. And that's kind of what this looks like. But they spent, like, $200 million or whatever. This actually reminded me a little bit of, like, Bloodborne. (laughs) Have people made that joke yet? (laughs) I don't know. I've never played Bloodborne. The first, like, levels of Bloodborne kind of remind me of this. (laughs) Um, I have not played Bloodborne. I did, however, start Monster Hunter, and uh, mm-hmm. you get a little cat assistant in that game, which oh, is delightful. Nice. That's great. Um, this is the uh, like watching these cats is the opposite of the feeling I get from that. This this song is at least supposed to be kind of sinister. <laughs> if you see the the play version, they all kind of like chant it in unison, which is like your first implication is that this is a cult of cats. <laughs> Well, you know what? To because I think we do actually have positive things to say about this. Um, not in the way the film obviously intended in any capacity. But yeah. if I'm gonna give credit to the, the the artists that are not Tom Hooper on this film, I think this movie has amazing production design. Not with the cat oh, the people, <laughs> but everything yeah. else. 
Yeah, the problem is they're like a black hole of horror, so like it sucks your attention towards them. Oh yeah. But yeah, like, if you like look around at the sets, there's like actual like people running around on like giant furniture, which is a ton of fun. And yeah, it looks it looks very fun. I like the lighting at times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't look great on the cat flesh, <laughs> but uh, it, I I do kind of. Oh my god, there were just like three cats behind. Look at those cats on the right. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> That's that is terrifying. <laughs> That's like one of those horror movies, like those found footage films, where like you see something for half a second in the corner, and you're like, "Holy shit!" There was like a ghost. <laughs> oh my god. No, you know what? It's like the mom in Hereditary. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> she's like in the corner, and you just, when you realize that she's there, it just like it, it makes yeah. the rest of the movie fucking terrifying. Did you ever see that that Ghost Watch, that British TV show? No. Where it was like it was like that thing where like they pretended it was a real broadcast, but it was all fake, and like it freaked out like all of England. It's kind of like a great kind of like War of the Worlds radio broadcast type story. But a lot of what they do in that is that there's like a guy that'll be in the background. If you're not paying attention, you'll like see it, and it's terrifying. And like that's what this movie is. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, my mind went to uh, also Lake Mungo. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh which not I know not a lot of people have seen it so I'm not going to spoil it here either but um just keep an eye on things in the back of that film. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't catch them, don't worry. You will eventually. Yes, don't worry. You just go for the ride for that movie as you do with this. Yes. Um they both have a very similar ending thematically, but I don't think they intend to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and oh, now we're no. headed to the milk bar. No, no, no. We don't go to the milk bar yet. That's right. Is old Deuteronomy about to show up? No, 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 no. We we have to go do the... Um, uh, oh, the, the, no, yeah. yeah. Gum- the old Gumby cat. Mm-hmm. Which is like, if there's a sequence from this movie that you should have fucking cut, it's the old Gumby cat. And, I mean, I'm not even a giant fan of the old Gumby cat song. Which is a three-part harmony in the play, and in this version, it's just Rebel Wilson. <laughs> um, and it's so awful. We'll get to that. That that's like when it's just like they front-loaded the terror. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the name of the cat singing to to, to Victoria? Not not no, magical Mister Mistopheles, but the other one. Um, Monkestrap, I believe. Monkestrap. Okay, that dude is on Twitter, and. Mm-hmm. He has, like, he clearly has a ball just responding to people's cat gifs and stuff like that. (laughs) And I think that's the attitude everyone who worked on this movie should have. I I am glad for him. All all the A-listers should be ashamed. (laughs) And I, because I feel bad because the girl playing Victoria is like, it was like, they, they, in the trailer, they did a whole, like, introducing, and then her name, Mm. remember, uh, Francesca Hayward? (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, this is like her big screen debut. Oh my god, she that dude. Out. Look at the collar. Oh my god, what? That is not like attached to a human being. Mm. It's like they're just like Rebel Wilson. You're a cat. You're a cat. You're a fat cat. Now, now do funny cat things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're making a joke, but that is like. There's like a 99% chance that was her actual direction from Tom Hooper. Yeah. Well, you can tell that Tom Hooper definitely got these people to fucking commit. Like, say what you will about that guy. And also, you these the, the big A-listers must have been like... You know, like how actors are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and they love workshops where it's like, all right, how about you act like a cat in this scene, you know? We, want, we had a little more cat to your performance so they're like they probably fucking were like overjoyed to be like oh i get to walk around and be a cat not knowing what it's gonna look like oh uh, uh, (laughs) wait 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 what is she holding there what when she was speaking into the fake microphone that wasn't her tail and i don't think that was another cat's tail what was that i don't know i don't have time because we've already transitioned to the horror of the little children's faces. Oh, I. On oh boy, <laughs> the mice, which definitely don't look finished. That this feels like the one like they thought they're like. There's no way they're not gonna cut this scene. <laughs> and then, Lo and behold, 
Oh, it's so uh, this this is upsetting. <laughs> it is. It's very um Oh no. No, but uh, I I agree nuts. with um the the A-listers should be like run through the streets with this. Especially People... Rebel Wilson and uh our boy James Corden. Because we'll they, get the court yeah. in a moment, but I would ask. I don't know. I don't know anything about Rebel Wilson. I just know that people hate her. <laughs> okay. Well, I, yeah. I don't. I don't like. I don't like her. Or dislike her. She's just like an actress, and she tends to be she in movies those, I don't like. <laughs> she she was in Pitch Perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. I like the first one. I've never seen any of the Pitch Perfect movies. Oh, okay. Well, I, um, you're you're probably not missing out. If I'm being honest. Okay. Oh my god. Um, yeah, this one this, this one kind of goes on for a while. <laughs> I know that's the thing; it's so long, <laughs> and it's it's every shot is like, oh, <laughs> oh no! Well, it's like so this time she's using her tail. Yeah, yeah. It's like they asked her to use her tail in that one shot, but then when they were doing the special effects, they realized it didn't make sense for it to be her tail. <laughs> yeah, and then they just made so it they... something else. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and here comes the cockroach people. Oh no. What are these people doing with their life? Uh, hopefully something better. Do cats eat cockroaches? Uh. You know what? I my indoor cats that I've had in my life, I've never seen them do that. I have seen uh. outdoor cats eat cockroaches. So, oh yeah. boy. Oh, hey. <laughs> you know, ripped yep, the flesh off. Yep, there it is. Um. This Eldritchian why, horror. <laughs> why didn't they just start with this outfit? I don't, I don't this know. This outfit looks fine. You know? Oh, God. This... Or, the cockroaches <laughs> are on a cake. <laughs> and, like, I guess... Is that supposed to be, like, fun? Because cockroaches ah. are not, like, fun <laughs> creatures, you know? No, they aren't. They're, They're disgusting. Yeah. And you, like, can't make them look good. But like they're, they, I don't know why there's human faces on them. I just don't. It's 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 so weird to go from like, all right, so the children are mice, fine, like that's a choice. But then it's like adults are also the cockroaches. <laughs> and then they're like they're flying away right now, uh, and it looks really bad. Um. Up. Oh. oh boy. <laughs> oh, here he comes. <laughs> You know what? I actually like him in this. Uh, I I don't hate him in this. Uh, and you know what? For for the nightmare of twenty twenty, Jason Derulo's uh, TikTok videos have been very fun. It's just like it's just some dude having fun on the internet. They're they're pretty wholesome, very creative with his whatever team. So if you're interested. <laughs> Check them out. It's just like, oh, that's a cool way to spend five seconds of my day. <laughs> and then you move on. All right, so there's a shot where he, like, the Rum Tum Tugger's like, all right, I'm dancing with you guys. And it's like, oh, I'm in a cupboard. Look, how, how did I do that? <laughs> it's like these, like, random moments where it gets fantastical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just confusing. Yeah, because, like, Tom Hooper's whole thing is that, like, he, he's interested in, like, this grounded realism, but... His material is not ever suited for that. So what? Yeah. What the hell is his problem? <laughs> it was like, like it's like, because Lay Miz definitely had that problem where it's like, I almost wish Tom Hooper. Tom Hooper probably could have done a good Lay Miz adaptation that wasn't the musical, but he did the musical, and that's why it's like fucked up. <laughs> uh, why did he even say yes to this? What did he see in this? Uh, he probably wanted like another Oscar opportunity. He, I, I, you know, yes. there's no way to predict this. This is where uh, another thing I really despise about this. Like, let's just like pretend for a moment you're enjoying this, <laughs> and you're like, all right, this song's fun or whatever. But then they're like cutting back to Rebel Wilson, who's like, hey, maybe he's been neutered because he's got high pitches. You get it, like balls. And it's like, why is that in the middle of this song? Well, yeah, that, I mean, that that also kind of feeds into, like, Tom Hooper's whole thing, where his stuff isn't, like, committed to look, being look at, a musical, you know? Like, from his shot placement yeah. to how he cuts into those comedy beats, if you want to call them that. Like, 
He's like ashamed it's a musical. Yeah. And if you're going to do Cats, you kind of can't be ashamed of anything. <laughs> it's actually got a lot in common with like a fucking Marvel movie, to be honest. <laughs> Where it's like they're embarrassed to be comic book movies, so like they have to constantly be cutting to someone being like, Haha, this is ridiculous, isn't it, guys? And it's like, all right, cool. <laughs> it's like that was a fun action scene until that happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Are milk bars a thing? I, maybe in like the 50s, I don't know. Yeah. They should bring back Milkmen. I think some, like, towns still have them in America. Yeah. Which I think we're we're talking about because plastics are evil, so we got to go back to glass at some point, Mm. so we might see Milkman come back. (laughs) That would be be pretty cool, you know? Hey. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Milk! (laughs) Yeah, that's a hell of a cut. (laughs) Oh, my God, these cat bodies are just, like... (laughs) These angles are a mistake. Ah, they're licking the milk out of the... Out of the bowls. <laughs> this is the escalation from here. Like, the Rebel Wilson scene was just, like, uncomfortable to watch, but I'm getting a huge kick out of this now. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I this mean... one, this one's actually somewhat... Well, I think because he's having fun with the performance. Yeah, yeah. Like, he knows what the Rum Tum Tugger is, which is shocking, because Jason Derulo doesn't always come across like a guy who knows what's up. <laughs> like... But you know what? He... And again, this this goes to me bringing up his TikTok. Like, he seems sincere. Like, you, you never know about any of these fucking people. So whatever. But, like, his performance here se- seems, like, very sincere and honest for what it is. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that over, like, you know, I can dance, too. I'm, I'm, I'm quirky and fun, too. You know? I don't, I don't need that shit mm-hmm. in my movies ever again. Sorry. Yeah. And you know what? I got to give him some credit. He's, like, one of the few. I guess you can call him an A-lister. He's one of the few A-listers in the movie that actually bothered to stick around. Yeah, like, yeah. A big thing that keeps happening in this movie is they develop, like, this whole thing with McCavity where he's, like, kidnapping the other contestants. <laughs> and I don't know why he didn't bother with the Rum Tum Tugger, because, like, he seems like a guy who actually might have a shot. <laughs> like, his song is, like, a rockin' number. Yeah, and... it's, it's like, you know, there's a whole thing about, like, Maybe I, I had that theory about like maybe McCavity's doing some like seven deadly sins thing, and so yeah, like Rum Tum Tugger would be like uh, pride, right? Or lust? I think he'd be lust. Oh, okay, right, right, lust. That yeah. makes sense. Um, oh, here's Grizabella. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel sorry for Jennifer Hudson. Oh uh, yeah, but a hell of a voice. Yeah, it was third place on on American Idol and has, like, had the best career of anyone from that show. <laughs> so. And I, but, I've uh, heard uh, some, some mixed responses to her performance. I think she's, like, I, I know it's weird because the movie's just, like, insane. Yeah. Like, she's, I think she's really good. I would like to see her in more stuff. Yeah, I think she's great. Um, and it's a, it's a little different, you know, she's very, like, big with it, but that's kind of, like, what I think Cats calls for. hmm And I just think that the movie isn't big, which is odd to say. <laughs> yeah, because it's fucking Cats. Like, I joked about it being a follow-up musical, but, like, that's kind of the vibe I want from another Cats adaptation, if they ever dare yeah. upon they it. They never will. They never, <laughs> ever will. This is like retroactively like destroyed cats. Because <laughs> now, because this this was a lot of people's first introduction to cats, and it's like they they're like, is the musical this weird? And like the answer is like yes and no. <laughs> like this plot is really strange, but they added more stuff to it, and it the play also looks a lot better. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a lot of weirdness, and it really probably shouldn't be a movie, but it is for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, because everyone wants an Oscar, and yeah. serious musicals get you an Oscar. But one thing I was about to say is that there's like this plot element of like, okay, McCavity is getting rid of the contestants, which is kind of their way of being like, all right, James Corden and Rebel Wilson and Gus, the theater cat don't have to be around for the whole movie because if, if you watch the play like all the cats are kind of around you know they're all hanging out and like they'll join choruses and stuff when it's not their song like rum tum tugger hangs out like the whole time and he sings you know magical mr Vistopheles and all that but 
the two cats that appear and then exit the play <laughs> are Grizabella, I mean, not Grizabella, are uh, the old Gumby cat and Bustopher Jones. <laughs> so I don't know why they added this element of them getting kidnapped. <laughs> It must have been to stretch out the runtime or something, because like I guess I don't know. I'll, although maybe like an hour and a half is more than enough already for something like this. Yeah, I mean, I think this is like a shorter version than the musical. What? So, yeah, the musical is very long, and like the '97 version is also a shorter version. Good lord! So, but I think they both come in around two hours. I mean, you know, Broadway musicals are kind of long mm-hmm. by design. You want to show up and feel like you got your money's worth. <laughs> you want to see just fucking... But imagine, like, less of a plot. And that's cats. Because it's literally just one cat after another coming out and singing. <laughs> <laughs> and then at one bit at the end, uh, McCavity kidnaps old Deuteronomy. And then he immediately comes back and everything is fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh! Oh, our boy! <laughs> Why is this his introduction? <laughs> because they they knew that it would make you happy. I guess. I think they're like trying to be like, oh, oh, it might be McCavity, as if anyone watching this is even thinking that. <laughs> and then it's like, nope, it's Busta for Jones. And oh my god, this Busta for Jones is just terrible. Well, that's because James Corden is terrible. He... Also, again, it's like, it, it, it's one of these things, sorry, just to point out, like, Bustopher Jones is singing his own song. In the musical, it's like everyone's being like, oh, it's Bustopher Jones, he's no skin and bones. But he's like, I'm Bustopher Jones, I'm not skin and bones. In fact, I'm remarkably fat. It's like, that's it makes it worse. <laughs> um, I, I think James Corden might be, like, evil. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, I don't care for James Corden, but it's also, like, he's very easy to hate. And, all right, look, so let's say you're enjoying Buster Jones the song for a second. Let's pretend. <laughs> no one is, but let's pretend. And then you cut to this. It's like it interrupts the song. <laughs> yeah, like, what? what is the purpose of that? Wouldn't you want this to, like, bookend the songs at least or something, you know? Yeah. Like, and the whole of St. James, like... <laughs> <laughs> you immediately cut back to like like what what on God's green earth? <laughs> okay, so yeah. so maybe maybe James Corden is not evil, but he yeah he's someone easy to dislike, and I I think he There's... he has a persona of like trying to be like very like n- nice and likable, and anyone who knows very anything, it, it just very Ellen syndrome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if he also is the worst person behind the scenes, but I I, I just get the the vibe of like insincerity, you know. Yeah, and, there's there's also something about people like James Corden who come along. Oh, he fell in the trash can. Because that's funny. Um, and there's a lot of people like that where like Hollywood tries to be like he's the next big thing, and it's like he's suddenly everywhere, and it's like no. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, that's not how this works. You don't get to do that to me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he swallowed the whole thing. Yeah, because that's because he's that's, so fat. You know, fat people, they can just eat a lot. Yeah, that's that's how that works. Um, oh, my God, it's disgusting. Yeah, no, this is this is awful. Um, this is... I mean, Buster Jones is kind of supposed to be a fancy guy. Like, he's it's... He's just like everyone is proud to be nodded or bowed by Christopher <laughs> Jones, and it's like this version. It's like, oh no, he's a fucking boob. And like, I get it. Like, part of the joke of Cats is that it's like this is how cats see themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Buster Jones, he's fat. He's like a fat cat, and he's a slob, but he he thinks he's a like he's very proud of himself, you know. <laughs> Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves a good crotch joke. Yeah. Why is that here? I don't, I don't know. Um, oh, that's... Oh, wow. Oh, that oh. looks bad. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was pretty terrible. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what to add to this right now. That was just At least post- a lot. <laughs> 
Buster Jones does sing this part of the song in the play. Oh, okay. Uh, he he does like at some point he's like I am often seen at the gays you know, the stage and screen you know <laughs> which but and it's fu- like I don't know it's he's supposed to be fun <laughs> like like oh look at that guy you know you ever see like a fat cat and you're just like oh I gotta look at that cat like, yeah <laughs> you know it's like you're supposed to be like yeah look at him and like the cat's like fuck yeah I'm fat like. <laughs> That's like the vibe you're supposed to be getting, and instead it's like he's a fucking he's a monster who eats out of the garbage, <laughs> and he's just covered in slop. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, like this is. I, I think that's ultimately part of the problem with this is that it's so just like gross. It's a yeah. very gross film, you know. Also, a big mistake to be like the first. Two of the three first cats we meet are both like the joke is they're fat. Yeah, it's not a it's not a great like introduction to this, <laughs> which is not really the the play version. But mm. like you know they have fun with like oh cats you know there's fat cats and they're fun and great. But it's just ugh. oh my god it's still going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's tempted by the devil bathed in red he's light. Tempted by even more food. <laughs> You know how fat people are. This movie's, like, actively hateful of, like, everyone. I know. It's kind of like Tom Hooper's Bad Boys 2, which is why no. I, I appreciate it. No, I, I think there's a through line there. Although Michael Bay's probably a better director. So does everyone see McCavity kidnap him this time? No, they leave just before it happens. Yeah, it's, it's a little unclear. Because, see, like, they're all just standing around in the back. This this boat they get that they get taken to, which hasn't happened yet, but it's about to, is not in the play. <laughs> I want to stress that. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that none of the like, which there's like a climactic fight. It's not in the play. <laughs> so, and Growl Tiger, who's on the boat, which again we're not there yet, but like he has a number that's not in the. Oh, it's a uh, Mongo Jerry Rumble teaser. Um, who I love in the play. <laughs> and again, there's supposed to be cats where they're like, oh, they walk around. You know, like how when you're you're like, you have cats and like you'll hear a crash in the other room and you're like, oh my God, something fell over and you run in and you see like a vase knocked over and then your cat just standing by it. Because <laughs> 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 they fucking did it. And they're like, fuck yeah, I knocked that shit over. That's what these two are supposed to be like. <laughs> they're supposed to be the mischievous cats around the house. They're always knocking shit over. This they come across like they're about to like murder <laughs> her, like they're gonna fucking eat her flesh. <laughs> well, they're like henchmen that are revealed to be right. So yeah, not in the play again. Uh, oh uh, boy, it's just they give them like this really sinister stuff, which like fucks up all the fun that they have, and it's just they're just creepy. Is Tom Hooper Catholic? He might be. Okay, because that's, this, this, that's what I'm thinking. It's like, here's like all this this fun and joy in life, but you got to feel guilty about it. Yeah, you got to hate yourself for having fun. Yeah, that's very Catholic. That's definitely, <laughs> so. that's definitely Catholic. If you're Catholic for five minutes, that shit hangs with you. Yeah, your goddamn life. It's like, why do you think so. Daredevil's fucking miserable? Yeah. <laughs> What's that quote from Frank Miller where he's like, he has to be Catholic because only a superhero who's a lawyer would also be a Catholic. He has like some quote like that. that. <laughs> that's kind of amazing. Yeah, it's like when Frank Miller's like, it's that's when crazy Frank Miller is fun as opposed to xenophobic. Yeah, yeah. Before everyone found out he was like a, a raging racist. Yeah, look at this shit where it's like again, it's like oh they're tempting Victoria, which again Victoria is not a central character. In the play. There's no main character to the Cats musical. And, I mean, if you're gonna have a main character, fine. It kind of makes sense. She just dances. Victoria's whole thing is that she dances. (laughs) But isn't that like everyone in in the play? Everyone dances? Yeah, but I mean, she, like, she just, like, in between... I believe, like, one or two numbers, she just, like, she'll dance as a way to distract the audience from seeing shit change in the background. <laughs> okay, um, okay. But she's supposed to be, like, the young innocent. And in in some versions of the play, she embraces uh, Grizabella, the glamour cat, first. And, like, she's always trying to, and then, like, the other cats of the colony are, like, 
no, no, stop, we've rejected Grizabella. And it's kind of like a story about forgiveness and getting to die, you know, without a guilty conscience. Mm. And to be, like, redeemed in the end. And instead, I don't know what this is about. Yeah, <laughs> like, what, what what are we even watching here at this point? Uh, I, I, you know what? I don't mind um, having, like, this through line about, like, Victoria being the one, like, the audience surrogate almost, you know? And yeah. It's, uh, it, it's like, there's something there where it's like she's experiencing all this for the first time. And so that's how she gets introduced to everything, like... To me, that makes sense from the little I know about Cats as a play, a musical. Yeah, I think it, I, I think it would work. It's the other shit with McCavity that like fucks it all up. <laughs> like that shouldn't be here at all. She's having fun. Mm. She's like the only cat performance I actually believe, to be honest. <laughs> like as a cat. <laughs> so like, yeah, like kudos to her. Like, but oh my god. Like, these, these two are supposed to be fun, and I just, I'm upset that they <laughs> are not fun. I like the implication that the vase was just spinning for, like, 30 seconds by <laughs> itself. That's actually kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, no, a Victoria. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're evil, I guess. Mm-mm. And They get chased off, like, they get chased off, and fucking, he does not come to a rescue. <laughs> Oh, get it? He's a buffoon. That's another thing I don't like. <laughs> Give him some goddamn dignity. <laughs> magical Mr. Mistopheles. <laughs> no, this, this was the scariest part of the, the my original viewing experience, because I thought we were going to see a dog with the human face. Yeah. And I just... That would have... You know, I've seen Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and I don't need to see mm. that again. Yeah, oh my god, it would look like that. Yeah. That would be like everyone. <laughs> I guess they, like, on some level they must have known that would have looked weird. So they didn't do it, you know? I'm curious if, like, Tom Hooper was gunning for that. Just to, to shove as many animals as he could mm-hmm. with human features in there. And they were like, Tom, we just, we can't afford this. <laughs> we well, can't keep a, doing this. Song. There's a song in the musical that is not in this movie that, that 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 goes over like a battle between cats and dogs, and in the play the cats just dress up as dogs to reenact the battle, mm. and uh, they smartly cut it. Oh my god, he just fell. Yeah, like so. <laughs> there, there's no like obviously this is all fantasy and shit, but like there's no consistency to like the emotion of what gets them taken apart from my theory which is not really supported by the text of the film that it's like the the deadly sins and shit you know and then he literally just fell out of the sky so like what is growl tiger (laughs) i like growl tiger growl tiger growl tiger has a song and they don't do it Hmm. um but i can't believe they talked ray winstone into doing this no, I get it. The guy likes to get paid. He also seems committed, but also they give him clothing, so he's, like, appealing to look at. Yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world. How hard would it have... I mean, I, I guess maybe they would have had to put, like, digital clothes on everyone. So, like, that would have been a little challenging. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the clothing just looks so much better. Yeah. Well, like, is that digital like... clothing? I can't tell. I really... I. I... I'm not totally sure. It looks the same as the fur. Mm-hmm. So either the fur looks really good or the clothing just looks strange. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we're still here. <laughs> yeah. And again, none of this is in the play. None of that. God almighty. None of that happens. It's been a while. I should. I, I should. I thought I still had cats on VHS, and I went through my VHS collection and couldn't find it. So, uh, I might have to repurchase that one because I wanted to watch it again. <laughs> Although most of it is up on YouTube, if you want to watch it. Which, if I, I recommend it, if if you can't uh, make it through a viewing of cats in one sitting, maybe that's the way to go. You know. Well, here's the thing. Like I was thinking about this where. Everyone that saw this was kind of like, oh my god, this is going to be like the next like Rocky Horror, like it's going to be the next room where like people are going to 
talk about it for years. It's going to be like this classic like disaster of a movie that people watch over and over again. And I, that kind of hasn't happened yet. And I can't tell if it's just because 2020 was such a like nightmare year that we don't even like have time to be like, let's laugh at the, the freak show. <laughs> like, <laughs> we only want like things that keep us calm on some level. And, but also all the stuff that is like fun, weird that is in this movie is all already in the play. <laughs> And all the stuff that is, like, off-putting weird was invented for this movie. So, I feel like if you're going to get into Cats, just watch the 97 version. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it occupies a weird space in pop culture right now. Because it is, like, the butt of the joke. James Corden and Rebel Wilson did that whole, like... Oh, we know what it's like to work with bad VFX artists, and it's like, no, you assholes! Like, I I feel like it hasn't yeah. had time to breathe. I think I think you're kind of on point with the idea of like 2020 just being too much of a hell year, and it was it was too mean, like to be the butt of the joke, you know? Like, or yeah. people were being too mean about it to an extent, and so now it just needs time to like kind of settle into something. Some, something else, I guess. That, that I just don't know if the hive is growing or not. Like, is there a cat's hive out there? It's about to rise up. I don't know. I know there's a, there's that weird corner of film Twitter that I love, which has a lot of crossover with Alien Covenant film Twitter for some reason. <laughs> um, only, don't know what that's about. Can like, only weirdos can like that fucking movie. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> When you told me the, that one detail about what the table is in Alien Covenant, it's about as nightmarish as this film. Yeah. <laughs> and it, like, upset me on a level that, like, I couldn't shake it for days. Oh, I'm sorry. And, oh, yeah, well, and you're, you're Sarah Ian McKellen, I forgot. Yeah, he's just there now. Mm -hmm. Glad he got a big introduction. Yeah, that's, uh... Gus is also a cat that, like, isn't always around. Like, they, they, they just kind of wheel Gus out. And they're like, all right, this is Gus. Here's here who here's who he is. And then he leaves. And they still have him be like... You know what? He actually looks all right. But again, I think it's the clothing. Yeah, the clothing helps a lot. Uh, Judy Dench gets extra weird because it's unclear whether or not that is her fur or her clothing. <laughs> yes, that's that's incredibly strange. When she's doing the light leg stretches. Oh, yeah, that's that's not great. Old Deuteronomy is often a man in the play. Mm. Um, so I guess, this, I mean, whatever. It works as much as it can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who doesn't like oh Judy God, she, Dench? I forgot. She, she looked at the camera this early. I thought that didn't happen until the end. Like, I think she's supposed to be looking directly at Victoria, but she did look like she was just looking, like, directly at us, <laughs> which was not appealing. We're only an hour in, by the way. I know. That's, that's fucking... <laughs> oh, my God. Um... The the character introductions in this are so fucking bizarre, like because they go halfway with some of them, like Ian McKellen, uh, who's just meow. meow. <laughs> 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 Hasn't he won an Oscar? Oh, no. <laughs> or, or at least been nominated. Oh, no. But yeah, like like he doesn't get shit. We we literally just like kind of rack focus to him for a second, and it's like, oh, I guess he's here now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> But McCavity got one early. McCavity got a whole sign. Yeah. What? 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 What is the logic behind that? You know, like when you're crafting a story or a movie or whatever, like you, you, you need characters to have, or certain characters to have certain like styles of introduction. You know, like it's always going to change depending on what you're trying to accomplish in the story. But like, what? There, there is no Jealous. rhyme or reason to any of this, and that's kind of, I think, the charm. You know, other times yeah. it's just off putting and other times it's just like, what was anyone thinking? But I think I, I just think that there's an equal amount of strangeness to the play itself that if you want to if you want that strange itch scratched and you also want to enjoy yourself, <laughs> you can watch the, the 97 and also like the songs are just better in the 97 version. They fuck up all the songs here for some reason. I think a big part of that is that. uh Taylor Swift's character in the play like hangs around like she's usually like she's singing a lot of the songs about the other cats 
That's normally how it's done. Where it's like old Deuteronomy is like skim bull shanks, and you know, and then occasionally the 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 cat in question will sing a few lines, but then there's like a chorus. And this one, all the cats just sing about themselves, <laughs> and it just it, it gives it a weird, a weird vibe. <laughs> that it, again, it's just like I don't really like, I don't like the music. I guess it occasionally gets all right. There's like a weird stretch where a few songs in a row are good. This one is not. This one just keeps going. Oh, um, and then uh, the, the railway cat is also here now. We don't know that yet, yeah. but he's he's in the images. So that's... Well, it's funny because it's like all the ones that get kidnapped are like the A-list actors, right? Mm-hmm. It's like all the A-list actors and Skimbleshanks. <laughs> <laughs> like... Well, everyone loves Skimbleshanks. I know. He's great. His song's the best. Yeah. <laughs> And, but again, I also think they get it wrong. We'll get to that when we get to it. But like, there's just there's all this. It's supposed to be like what like an idea or like a facsimile of cats. It's not supposed to be actual cats. <laughs> god damn it! Like, it's oh my god, I do not like this. <laughs> well, I I just don't know what the uh, the purpose is at this point. Because there's, like there's a lot of no, you know, there's some no homo happening. Oh, um, of, of course, naturally. Um, but like, God forbid, <laughs> <laughs> this movie <laughs> appeal to the gays. I, I guess my I hate to break it to you if you if you like cats, you might you might be a little gay. <laughs> Sorry, people. I guess my my big question, just with this scene in particular, uh, I know just one is hard to pin down, but. What is the the purpose of like we we already had um the introduction to Judy Dench's character and that was enough yeah. to kind of placate everyone for like okay we're gonna make the Jellical choice in there and then we just it just continues so like what yeah, th- purpose does it serve <laughs> I believe this is the number they do right before the uh, intermission. So, like, of course, you want to have, like, a big number so the audience kind of leaves, like, on a high note, right? Mm-hmm. And also, like, a, dancing is a huge part of the play, so it's very hard to translate dancing to the screen. <laughs> like, dancing is kind of fun when you see it live. Um, but, yeah, it's – you could have cut this back a lot. <laughs> yeah, and it's – again, it, it keeps cutting away from the dancing for, like, these – because it, ha- it wants to fill the void of story. Oh, my God, they have shoes. Yeah, I know. It's, wow. <laughs> but, like, they, they keep cutting away. Like, this is the most they focused on a single dancer the entire film right now. Yeah. Right? Or two dancers, I guess. But, like, look at that. Mm-hmm. That There's no cutting away. And it's, like, not bad. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like. And, and remember that the main character, Victoria's defining trait is that she's a dancer. <laughs> And she has not gotten that opportunity yet. Okay, here we go. Here we go, but it's like they're teaching her to dance. But look, they're, they're, it's holding. It's just holding, and it's All like, right. nice. It's like, okay. That's kind of fun. Yeah, it's like yeah. not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> See how long it lasts. I don't I don't expect... There you go. You, a close-up, and then a, a wide. That sun... There's the sun in the background. It looks like the midsummer thing they walk through. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of parallels. And Skimbleshanks is having fun. At least Skimbleshanks is still kind of... Ari Aster's cats. You know what? It might have worked. <laughs> <laughs> Would have gotten the realistic spiked penises, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Scorsese complimented him. If Scorsese complimented me, I too would feel like I could do anything in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I mean, like, yeah, that's going to be like... Ariaster's gonna be like, I'm fucking untouchable, and his next film is gonna be some disaster, but I can't wait. <laughs> Rhyth- rhythmically breathing <laughs> is what it just said. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, it's just it just keeps going. <laughs> like, this is under the impression that this is at all appealing to look at. <laughs> like, okay. Like again, it, it, Tom Hooper was he, he must have just been like all right, they didn't like the trailer, but once they see this shit, <laughs> they're going to realize how fucking brilliant it is. 
because like if 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 that had been the reaction of the trailer, it's like all right, this scene that's like ten minutes long for some reason, make it two, cut it to two minutes, and instead. It just keeps going. I guess it's over. It just kind of stopped. Yeah, because she because because <laughs> Victoria left the room, and so she's like literally catching her breath outside. And it's like, oh, perfect audience surrogate. This is literally what I did in the theater <laughs> when I went and saw it on Oxycodone. <laughs> I saw this recovering from surgery, <laughs> and I also I had seen uh because we did the uh, Star Wars thing, um. I had I'd seen Rise of Skywalker for the second time just before. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a long day. Um and then I had to I had to go to a bar cuz my phone had died and I sat there and I had to admit to them. I was I was more comfortable admitting to them that I woke up early to see Star Wars again than admit that I went and saw Cats. <laughs> Yeah, like, there is a certain group of people that you can talk to this movie about, or talk about this movie with, you know, and, like, maybe don't bring it up to people you're just casually friends with or something like that, you know, maybe yeah. not bring it up at Christmas with the extended relatives uh, in a year when we didn't have a pandemic, you know. I came very close to being like, oh, we should, like, like trying to get, like, like <laughs> it was like, oh, my God, I can't believe it's real. And I was like, you know what? It's really bad. And they're like, is it that bad? I was like, oh, yeah, you should see it. And I came very close to being like, we should watch it. And then I was like, no. <laughs> like, it, the joke gets old after, like, two minutes <laughs> if you're not into it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, you know, I did, I, I mentioned it on the episode we did on it, but I did have walkouts, like, <laughs> a yeah. big group of people, so. <laughs> I was alone. The whole theater was empty. It was just me and the cats <laughs> and the oxycodone. <laughs> um, I, I, I am looking forward again. to eventually it being safe in, in, for theaters again. And I would love mm-hmm. for someone to host a, another cat screening. Or, or, uh, or at the very least, like, I, I want to put up, like, a projector and just invite, like, friends that would be into it, you know? Yeah. Well, they're allowing, I believe some theaters are allowing you to, like, rent out an entire theater. Yeah, like, yeah, I, I, I'm seeing that. So. I, I just, like, like I, I can't make that leap yet, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get it. <clears throat> Although I do want to see Monster Hunter. But I'll cut that. So, so don't, don't you dare! <laughs> don't in, how dare you bring that up right now? I know. Like, that's a whole fucking can of worms. <laughs> um, I, I like the lighting in, in this these later sequences a lot. I don't know why. Yeah, I, th- I think it's just like and it's not. There's a nice atmosphere. Those bare feet. Yeah, v- Victoria has bare feet. Um. The tails look really bad. That might be an odd complaint, but the tails look bad. <laughs> well, they don't look like fully connected. And you know what? What makes it uh, even weirder is that here's they're... Taylor Swift's. This is Taylor Swift's original song she added for the film. Oh, really? I believe. I think so. Is this beautiful ghost? I have it on mute, so yeah, no, no, I'm I have to guess. No, I think you're right. But um, part of what makes the tails look weirder, and and Victoria's tail is also gone right now, um, mm-hmm. is that uh, <laughs> like it. They tend to be as in focus as like the face, and it's like yeah. that's not that's not how that works. <laughs> it's the depth of field gets weird. Yeah, they like they didn't they decided like not even to bother with the depth of field on that tail for that shot, so they just didn't have it. <laughs> uh, I I don't think the cat looks that bad right now because she's standing still. <laughs> I guess, but it's like, it's just like, this is the entire wrong approach for these fucking Oh, no, monsters. no, completely, completely. Um, but on the, the on noses, grading the curve. The human, the human noses are what fuck it up. Like, they they should have cat noses, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's just, it's awful. And I don't get it, like, just look up how they look in the stage version. <laughs> Or you know what? Fucking James Cameron's Avatar. There's your fucking cat people. You know? I get yeah, like look, they did it. Yeah. And everyone makes the joke, it's just blue cat smurfs or whatever the fuck, but it's like, yeah, but, but we also they don't look like horrible like monsters. 
Yeah, like this movie shows you how easily it would have been to just be disgusted by them. Yeah, so I don't want to hear that kind of slander about Avatar ever again. Like or dislike yeah. the movie all you want, but you, you leave the Navi alone. <laughs> the eyes don't look great on that head either. Mm. I think it's one of those things where once, if you remove people's hair, you realize how big their foreheads are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. It's like it feels like you're fucking around with like the player creation thing. <laughs> like a video game. I'm gonna have made the head like super long. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great because in a video game you don't have to stare directly at it. <laughs> yeah. So the... You just have those cuts. Ah, it looks stupid in the cutscenes. Ah. That's a lot of uh people find that funny. Yeah. I don't, I don't really Personally, I don't get it, but, like, I also don't get why every song in this movie is, like, ten minutes long, you know? Yeah, it's it's strange. <laughs> but this is the new one, so... And I believe it was written, like, a day before. <laughs> oh, okay, that like, makes they sense. they finalized it, like, a day before. Hmm. This, was, this was their Oscar play for original song. Because they just don't make movies with songs anymore. Yeah, you know, like, I I know people don't love La La Land. Um, I'm I'm not like super in love with it either. But like, mm-hmm. wow. Um, I I think fondly <laughs> of the stuff well, that yeah, doesn't makes... work in that movie compared to anything here. This makes La La Land look like Singing in the Rain. Yeah. <laughs> And I, that's when I turned on La La Land. I rewatched Singing in the Rain, and I realized, oh, he was just trying to make that movie. <laughs> well, no, he's making... Uh, not not to get the whole thing, but, like, he, he's trying to make his, we like... We do it. it. Nothing's happening. Yeah, he's trying <laughs> to make his, his, his Jock Demi movie. He's trying to make Umbrellas of Turbo, yeah, which is a good, significantly good better film than, like, everything we've talked worse. about today. That makes it even worse. Honestly, kind of, but, like, you know, there's there was only one Jock Demi, so... Yeah. You just just do fucking Whiplash again. Like, that was his movie. Like, that was, like, it had his vibe. There's not another movie where I'd be like, all right, that's what Whiplash is like. I, I like La La Land more than Whiplash. I'm sorry. No, I like Whiplash. I like Whiplash. Mm. I know there's, like, a whole discourse about, like, that's not how genius works. And I'm like, I don't really give a shit about that, but... Oh, yeah, I yeah. I'm not, like, I don't know. The... I, have my, I have my limits for the discourse now, you know? Like mm-hmm. once once you move on from like trying to find like uh like sanctity politics in movies, you know, like I don't need them yeah. to have the answers to like life. <laughs> I just need them to be like engaging now. I find more enjoyment in that, you know. Yeah. It's just uh fuck. Fuck everything. <laughs> I mean, hey. it's, it's one of those things it's it's just the something of like any discourse, I, I honestly recommend, when a discourse is happening, get out a notebook, write down what's happening, and then put it on the shelf and look at it two weeks later. <laughs> and you'll feel like an idiot. <laughs> so. Yeah, I have spent significantly less time on Twitter lately, and it has done great for my health, and also just realizing, like, you really don't have to comment on everything. No one's going to give a yeah. shit in a day. So. Uh, also, this is the greatest part of the film coming up right now i like this um although it's it's also weird where again it's like gus's song gus doesn't sing his song in the play it's like everyone else is like oh this is gus he's the theater cat no but like there's something almost like he's tragic to him singing his own song here like there is a history there's a sense of character in it yeah (laughs) it's so bizarre and kind of fucked up how good it is. Mm-hmm. Well, it's also like, it's supposed to be, you know, again, this is the one where Gus is the cat that you see at the theater. If you go to a theater, he's always hanging around and he's been there forever. So he's always like a very old cat. Like, that's the only type of cat that would hang out at a theater, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, one that's very old and like has seen a lot of shit and is just relaxing. And, you know, he never left the theater. <laughs> <laughs> This is the one where, like, the artist can be like, this is how I feel as an artist. <laughs> uh, there's no theater cat in my, my local uh, cinema, but there mm-hmm. is an old camera shop run by two old buddies. 
And um, and there's a cat there that is just delightful. Yeah. Every now and then you go to places, like, I don't really have anything like that around here. The one, like, the cat food place that I go to has an old cat that, like, lives there. <laughs> so you get to see him every time, which, like, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you go you go certain places, you see stuff like that. And, again, it's supposed to be like, all right, so this that's, you know, these are the different types of cats you see in life. And they also, you know, all cats think they're the center of attention. <laughs> So it's like, of course, Gus thinks he's like the like. Without him, none of these theatrical productions would have gone on on very well. You know, <laughs> like, oh, I was once the star of the stage because I walked on stage a few times. <laughs> and of course, of course, if you're watching live theater and a cat walks on stage when it's not supposed to, you're gonna clap. <laughs> like that's funny and it's fun and it's like, oh, now they gotta get the cat off, haha, and. So, like, but in Gus's mind, it's like, I fucking save that production. <laughs> and that's what's fun about cats, you know? And, uh, but yeah, now he's old. And it's like, this is his last chance. It's just kind of sad that they, like, wheeled Ian McKellen out to do it. <laughs> no, no, that's what, I think that's what makes it great. Because the vibe of this movie is so wrong already, right? They tap into almost something like very human with this one instance of it and it makes it yeah. both more disturbing and even funnier at least to me i don't know i, I get a huge kick out of this one it's not very f- fun to watch though it's like kind of depressing yeah yeah you know, it's not much you can really say because it is very sad oh he's scratching himself that's not very good hmm. well i'm glad i, I this is kind of something where I'm kind of glad I don't know what the original footage looked like. Because it raises some questions. <laughs> Do they all have scholars and car like, like, uh, like collars and scarves, I mean? Uh, um, I don't know. Because that's like, it feels like they're maybe doing some fucking uh, Hanna-Barbera shit. Because all those, all the char- all the Hanna Barbera cartoon characters have like a, a tie or something because it makes the head animation a lot cheaper to do. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So you, you don't have to do the neck animation. I wonder if that was something they tried to do to like hide the fact that these are just people in like leotards. Oh maybe because like Victoria doesn't have one. Um, mm-hmm. Judy Dench doesn't have one, she but she has the fur. But she, yeah, but a lot of these cats have shit mm-hmm. going on. Even Mungo Jerry and Rebel Teaser. Although they're supposed to be like... Oh, Nigel Mr. Mistopheles did some magic. Yay. He did it. Hmm. See, some of the other cats do, yeah. Like, they have the stuff. It is kind of nuts that, like... This is in the play, too, where it's like... The one cat just is magical. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that happens in the cat's universe. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's a magic cat. Yeah. Even the clapping is just like... <laughs> well, they're, like, not clapping. They're, like, hitting their paws on the ground and, like... <laughs> like, yeah, that's but, what No, 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 but some of them do. are clapping. That's what makes it even weirder. So it's like, what, is, what are the rules? <laughs> you know? Like, everyone complains about, like, an occasionally weird, like, movie that might have, like, a fantasy bend to it. And it's like, oh, the rules don't make sense. But if you pay more than five minutes, like attention to it you'll get it this one oh look he's he's walking by the exit sign as he's about to exit the picture oh ha, 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 that's so clever that's an unfortunate shot oh he left an m on the wall <laughs> McCavity. That's... Oh, here goes skimble shanks <laughs> this is the one i like yeah this movie's the... fucking long <laughs> I know it's long, but Skimble Shanks is tons of fun. Yeah, yeah, no, and, it is. But I, I think we got to get through something is, else first. Again, Skimble Shanks is like he's the cat that hangs around, you know, the railway station, which I guess they have a lot more of in London because America doesn't believe in public transportation. <laughs> oh, and um, in Japan. Oh, hey. Which, oh, yeah, they have those uh, like very famous cats that are like railway guards and shit like that yes and the very first one you know unfortunately passed away recently and he has been immortalized in a golden statue at the train station which i just think is wonderful you know (laughs) yeah yeah and it's like again it's like skimble shanks thinks that without him the trains wouldn't run on time (laughs) (laughs) which is like that's the joke 
And then here Whoa. it gets like surprisingly. The, f- the the face looked really bad when he was coming down the stairs. Like, the fuck is fucking- I, I know that's not like a hot take with this movie, but like even yeah. like there's new discoveries I'm making, like watching it this close up screen, like, uh, wow. <laughs> Everyone who worked on this except for Tom Hooper is is like a real trooper. This is not great. Um. <laughs> oh, also, real clothes. Real clothes, worth noting. And, uh, oh, a collar. Maybe you got a point. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I, I don't know. It's It seems like maybe a choice that they made. Oh, my God, he's tapping. Because that's, the, you know, that's how you know he's a good tap dancer. When he taps a lot. Yeah, that's good tap dancing. There's a lot of tap dancing. Mm-hmm. I, it, honestly, it makes a lot of sense that Tom Hooper would think that. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like, in the play version, like, the other cats will, like, they get the garbage and, like, they build a fake train. Like, here they're doing, like, the bare minimum. Like, <laughs> and then they just end up on a railroad. Like, But you know what? No, this I kind of love. And I genuinely think, like, the sky shots are very, like, well-realized, um... The, the actual size and scale of the cats here gets very odd. Is it, is, are they trying to be, like, cute? Is that, like, supposed to be Hogwarts Express? I, I didn't even consider sure. that. And, oh, maybe. It looks maybe. a little bit. Mm. Uh, or is, is that just how the trains look there? I don't know, but, I mean, I'll, I definitely not now, but maybe they used to look like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it looks a lot. I mean, this is... Uh, no, it's not. It's a universal picture. I don't know what the fuck. Oh, my God. They have shoes. Um, <laughs> once, like, it's so, like, it's such a whiplash when you go from, like, some of them have bare feet, some of them have shoes. That shot's not great. No, that was real bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, they think it's funny, and it's not. <laughs> mm. What do they think this is fucking... Uh, I don't know. And there's no consistency <laughs> to, like, how they move through through these places. Yeah. The size is all over the place too. Yeah, that's, that's very uh, jarring. Um, you know, and, and you know, a big part of that does come down from like how just Hooper shot the scenes because he loves his mm-hmm. fucking wide angle shit so much that like it's really hard to make consistent. Where it's like, here's a great wide shot of everything, and then here's a close up, but we have to get everything else in the frame because of the way the sets are designed and like. He seems a little restrained at this time, though. Which is kind of surprising. It, it kind of, but like... It, Maybe the, it's just more jarring in Les Mis when... Because like, you're not distracted by cat monstrosities. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's... Up, oh, there's a mouse there for no reason. Yeah. It screams cats and runs away. Yeah, because that's funny. Um, you know what? Like, we were talking recently. I forget on what fucking retrospective but like you brought up the point how like the british sense of humor like it, it, people assumed it was like so smart because it's so dry <laughs> for a while and maybe we're, we're just finally moving on from that and realizing that like no the the, the british just kind of was fucked the last up. time when was the last time the british were funny intentionally oh you sends no, oh, and then he disappears. Hey. You know what? Yep. Uh, fuck Ricky Gervais now, obviously, but like he had that one HBO show. There's an episode he did with Liam Neeson where he wants yeah. to be an, a comedy actor. That's the last time a British person was funny. That's a genuinely hilarious like five minute sequence. Yeah, extras. I remember extras being all right. Yeah. Wasn't that that show? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the show is like fine, but like that one in particular is just like okay. That's kind of a get out of jail free card. Uh, catnip, and she has high heels. So, yeah, this song's balls. Like this version of it. Well, because you know it's again it's supposed to be. I believe it's supposed to be like a duet or something, and. But you know Taylor Swift can't can't have that for Taylor Swift. Mm. She's got to sing it. Well, you know, you, you you can't. Who did she? How many people did Taylor Swift fire after this trailer <laughs> dropped? <laughs> I don't know, but you, you you can't talk bad about the T Swift. Yes, you can. <laughs> it's it's incredibly easy to talk bad about Taylor Swift. No, no, no. You you um. 
the the white women will have your head. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think she's genuinely talented, and also everything you're saying is like a hundred percent true. No, she's she's talented. <laughs> she's also got a massive ego, but like so, like I, it, you know. A lot of people do. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not like, it's a little weird to single her out, I'll admit. But uh, she doesn't look like she's ever having fun. <laughs> it's, I think, something that is always a little strange, at least these days. Yeah, it like, she, she like just, she did two albums something. in 2020. And I'll, I'll admit that I, I think they're both actually quite good. But, like, yeah, maybe. And, and not to be like one of those men that was like, you know, uh, smile some more. I, I, that's definitely not what we're saying yeah, I here. I do not mean that. Yeah. I do not mean that. But like, um, um, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, I, I think in particular to cats, you know when she, she did doesn't like sell she fun. Having, <laughs> yeah. But you know when she looked like she was having fun last? When she was talking about how much she hates her friends. <laughs> when she did like those songs like Bad Blood and shit. Which is like an awful song, but she looks like she's having a fucking ball. Oh no, like, that that song was a banger. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, that like that's a Donald fun Trump, song. But it's like when Donald Trump gets excited when he talks about like using military action. Oh like, no, that, no, that's not the same at all. <laughs> it's like Donald Trump can't be empathetic at all, but when he's talking about killing people, he's like suddenly like his like eyes get like a glow in them. It's the same thing. <laughs> I don't know. I, she, um, I, I think she could have had more fun here if the movie was like made by a human being and not like some British monster, you know. I guess it's just weird. Like the, it's McCavity's song, and then she's here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, know. her character is supposed to be for the whole play. Like she sings like a good number of the songs, but like usually with other people, and. Instead, it's like, all right, she's going to show up for this one song. And who is she supposed to be in this movie? You know? Like, I know she's supposed I, to be in the play. Yeah, I don't but, know. like, what is... She doesn't look different enough from the other cats to be like, oh, my God, there's the one. She's the sexy one? <laughs> like, I... She shakes her hips a lot, but these cats are never good enough looking to, like, be called sexy. Yeah, so it just makes yeah. it even weirder. <laughs> Yeah, up there back. Yeah, that was very, um, I did not like that <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have no idea. Um, it's still going, though, and everyone else is getting super high. They're getting drugged. Yeah, they're getting, they're getting roofied, which is a whole other weird implication. Because, you know, like, McCavity's thing is that, like, He's committed every crime. Napoleon of crime. But he's also committed every crime known to man, and that leaves very odd implications. Yeah. Uh, And and he looks so bad. I know. Poor Idris Elba. One of our greatest living actors, and and, and this is what he gets here. How do you make him look unappealing? Yeah, that's like a whole, like... Thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but hey, he also had uh, Hobbs and Shaw. No but, one saw that. No, everyone saw it and they're all fucking wrong. I am. That movie's worse than Cats. I know, I'm sorry. I, I think, I, I, I've, I've mostly heard bad things about it. Yeah, like. it's, 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 it's so bad. But, uh, but he gets, li- he gets good lines in it. So. I don't understand, uh, any of this. Why do you, just, why, what do you do? I don't know. Well, like, the, uh, it gets even weirder because, like, they're getting drugged throughout the song, right? But then they're also participating mm-hmm. in the introduction to McCavity. So, like... Yeah. I don't know. He's got a scar on his face, too. Much like the Lion King. And green eyes. Mm-hmm. Very very green eyes. Green eyes, yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that head motion. But he, like, t- but he teleported uh, old Deuteronomy up there when, like, he's just trying to send her to the boat, right? Yeah, so, like, why not just do that? <laughs> yeah. Why do any of this? I don't know. It's, like, why do you have to drug everyone just to get to old Deuteronomy? She's old Deuteronomy. <laughs> old is in the title. <laughs> <laughs> you can just take oh, her. Oh, <laughs> no. 
Like, this is the part, I think, when we recorded, I forgot that in the play, McCavity does kidnap uh, Old Deuteronomy. Okay. But does not take her to a boat. <laughs> <laughs> the boat isn't in it. But, like, that's what, like, Magical Mr. Mistopheles gets his song to bring Old Deuteronomy back. And it's like, hey, and that's literally, like, the only, like, exciting thing that happens I do, in the musical version. I, I do want to point out that this scene in particular has... Idris Elba, Judy Dench, and Sir Ian McKellen, three of the greatest like British exports in human history, and they're in cats together. They're they're embarrassing themselves. That's that's kind of a tragedy. This cho- these choices are just like I, I you know I I did I I I'm willing to bet. The uh, Blu-ray did not come with a director's commentary. Oh my god! If it did, uh, I would buy it. I would yeah, gladly I, buy I, it. Absolutely. Also, why are the Mongo Jerry Rumble teaser left holding the bag? Like Taylor Swift left. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> There's no sense of character, so it's like hard to determine anything, you know. And then every time you try to sort something out, it's like it throws something new at you. Mm. Oh. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my, my head's about to explode. Yeah, but it's 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 over in You're like another half hour. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I have to look up whether or not it has a commentary. Like, this is gonna this is gonna bother me. Mm-hmm. I would I would uh, you know I'd get that Blu-ray. Oh, I feel like I would have heard. It is. There's a commentary track. There's a is is it Tom Hooper? It's Tom Hooper. Oh my god! How has this not been talked about? I don't know. I, I'm looking up the link through Gizmodo right now. Mm. The headline is "Cats is a medieval morality play," and 20 more highlights from Tom Hooper's strange director's commentary. Okay, let's go over this one well, because no one gives a shit what's happening with. Mr. Mustafa. All right, so here, here, are, the, here are the 20 highlights. Um, all right, number one, what is Cats really about? Tom Hooper says, the film sits in the that tradition of the picaresque or sort of medieval morality play where the hero goes on a physical journey where they meet characters who represent different virtues and vices. And through this, learn about their place in the world and learn some of the pitfalls and opportunities of the world. This. So where does uh the, where's the magician cat? <laughs> You're into that. <laughs> you know how in life we meet, you know, all the vices, <laughs> lust, greed, pride, and magician. <laughs> okay, here, here here's another one. Uh, he Hooper is explaining the reason for the the cat's face appearing in the moon and the clouds is the opening shot. He says, "I, I thought." <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought we'd start on the image of the moon, which in T.S. Eliot's poetry, specifically in The Practical Cats, the moon is referenced as a sort source of sort of spiritual and magical power. I like the idea that the moon lights up this cat face in the clouds, which hints at the idea of the heaviside layer. <laughs> this layer in the atmosphere where you could go to get renewed and reborn. And also, I think it sort of sets the tone of the film. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think referencing back to that thing you do as a kid when you look at the cloud and your mom points out the shape of an animal and the idea of hidden identities sitting within things. This person, oh God, this, is amazing. this is why you don't need to go to film school, kids. <laughs> like, I'm I'm not That's... dismaying anyone who, who does or does not want to. Like, you know, whatever. Um, but Wow. It it doesn't matter. That's what you should take yeah. away from this. That's amazing. That that that. Oh my god. Oh my god. It was Rebel Wilson's idea to have the mice play like kids. No explanation for why they were so much smaller than they should have been. <laughs> what? Yeah. Does he just let? People do that. I, like, I guess there's more mice hey, I got, on screen. Also, 
oh yeah but it's just like Rev Wilson's like you know it'd be fun if we had cat kids play the why would you listen to Rebel Wilson? Like, what is what insight does she have? Oh, here's another fucking doozy. Uh, Tom Hooper's quote. Women playing cockroaches whose only unusual trait is that they have an extra pair of arms in homage to the cockroach number of limbs. I don't think that's an actual, like, sentence. In, in, what does that mean? I don't know. Like, that's something Tom what? Hooper said, apparently. Um, I don't know what it means at all. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Tom Hoover says to no one in particular. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean, Tom? I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, wow. Um, cool. <laughs> oh, do you want... What is the, Here, I'm just going to... Keep, keep going, keep going. Yeah, I'm gonna keep, keep going to keep doing a couple. I'm not going to read all of it because, wow, but uh, on the casting of Judy Dent as old Deuteronomy. <laughs> this is going to be something. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sorry. Time, Tom. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why does the god of cats have to be <laughs> Why? <laughs> like his, he, he like grabs someone on the street. Why does the god of cats have to be a man? Oh my god. <laughs> Kids, this this is why you should never take your art too seriously. Because you're gonna come across like this fucking asshole. Oh my god. That I cannot why? wait. Diego, why? <laughs> I cannot wait to listen to this. Answer him. He's asking a question. <laughs> Answer him. <sighs> oh my oh, god. god. Oh no, what? It was oh, apparently no. Dench and Ian McKellen who decided their cats had boned in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Again, he's just letting them do this. Tom Hooper is coming across. Oh God, I forgot that like he actually does magic. Like I forgot this happened. Yeah, yeah, like full on uh, magic, magic. Yeah, but I was about to say, the, Tom Hooper has never met an idea he didn't like. <laughs> like. Like whatever you say to him, he's like, "That's fucking brilliant." Like, <laughs> You could suggest I've never like you must just say yes to everything. I I think so. <laughs> um, Good God! Oh, and then his reasoning for, for the magical Mister Mistopheles magic uh, finally working at the end of the of the musical, uh, as opposed to the various other times we saw it work at the rest of the musical. I guess. Mm. Um, I liked the idea that magic is more likely to be successful if he sort of uses Judy's cat basket to help the magic. I don't... <laughs> he does meet magic throughout the rest of the play. What is... But what does that mean? I don't know. What? It doesn't mean anything. It's just him talking. I really thought the magic would work once I used the Aztec temple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wow. Oh, we still gotta have a boat fun. Oh, yeah. God. This is idiotic. <laughs> oh, she zipped her flesh off again. Yeah, yeah, she's... That's how she escapes? Yep. Oh, my God, I forgot that detail. <laughs> That's actually incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she hit herself. Yeah. Because he's an idiot. Mm. Um, it's like, now we gotta have, like, a boat fight, but, like... It comes before the climactic song, so it's like, it, is this the climax? I think it. It's, oh, he spit a hairball because that's got to happen. Yeah, I, I think it's so. supposed to be like the climax, but we also did just rescue old Deuteronomy. Gatsby believed. Gatsby believed in the green light. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the green light. <laughs> the distance. Oh my god. Uh. <laughs> Oh wow! This is ah, yeah. It's it's Magneto. <laughs> oh boy, he was he went full Magneto for a second. 
We are the future, you Charles. Me when you had the chance. <laughs> we are the future, Charles. Not them. <laughs> uh, wow. In X Men Three, when he loses his powers because he gets shot with the cure thing. Oh yeah. And and then they just show him at a park bench at the end of the movie, and it's like he's a war criminal. <laughs> yeah, like did they just let him go after that? <laughs> he's killed so many people. <laughs> Oh, now the the big moment. Yep. You know, this is actually good. I mean... Well, it's it's not unbearable. <laughs> yeah. And the it's camera weird. settled, finally. Mm -hmm. But they zoom in on her face when she's singing it, and it's just like, why? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the depth of field on that is, like, so bad. Like, when they get that close to the faces, you really see that it is just kind of, like, face app quality. <laughs> You know? It is. It's a lot. Yeah. Did they? Did they should have done a promotion where it's like, turn your face, use this app to turn this filter, Snapchat filter, to turn your face into a horrible cat monstrosity. You know what? Yeah, that would have been perfect. Hey, all the, you know, all the hype for this did manage to push this movie to a seventy-five million dollar gross, <laughs> which is like it, more than it, it, it would have had. Yeah, it it still bombed horribly because it cost around eighty to a hundred million, and then like another but, hundred million for marketing, which I think people yeah. severely try to downplay. But um, you know what's no, you know what's pretty fucking funny though. I'm willing to bet that they were actually pissed that did seventy five million because then it's like harder to write off. Yeah. You know? like, so Universal got like fucked like twice. Ah. <laughs> uh. And now we're just like, this is the part where the audience is like, is that what this is about? <laughs> <laughs> we can just kind of unwind, kind of, maybe? It's 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 about this cat getting redemption, I guess? And, well, uh, here's what Tom Hooper said. All right, let's hear it from the Hooper <laughs> himself. That um, on the filming of Memory, that we shot this over one day. I think it was about 15 takes, and this is mainly take 15 with a bit of take 14. I can't imagine what it would be like to be Jennifer Hudson with the pressure of singing the most iconic song from the musical. Like with Les Mis, not only is the singing live, but the accompaniment is live. So it's really a duet between the pianist and the performer. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, this is uh, like, all right, buddy. Good, Not all right, a lot uh, going on up there, I guess. It feels like he ran out of things to say uh, about the same time we did. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I have I have a fantastic closing quote, but I want to. It needs to be saved for for the end. Yeah, yeah. Well, we also got to get to like the. I mean, like how long? How much? How long have we been recording? Almost an hour and so, a half, exactly. So they're shockingly like 10 minutes of this movie left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and a big portion of that is uh, Judy Dench looking directly into the camera. Oh, yeah. To tell us that a cat is not a toy. <laughs> you, you are going to love this quote. Oh. Boy. <laughs> I think I might have to do it before the official ending just to let us kind of... No, we'll, 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 we'll get to it because let's give, you know, let's, let's give... Jennifer Hudson, some appreciation. Oh no, no, no! She yeah, yeah, I'm not. Oscar. I'm not going to say it now. I'm just saying, like, she has an Oscar, though, right? I don't know. It... Like, didn't she win for Dreamgirls? Oh, that's right, huh? Yeah. Yeah, she she's like a genuine talent. She might be the most talented yeah. like singer of the bunch in this. She just needs an Emmy at this point, and then she'll have an EGOT, I believe. Oh, she good. Have a Tony. good. Good for she her. She doesn't have a Tony, does she? Oh, no, no, no. She also needs... Uh, yeah. Well, whatever. You're close enough. Yeah. It's cl She's closer to an EGOT than I am, <laughs> so <laughs> that's impressive. But no, she, she like, just fucking destroys this, and... Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I know... Again, I, I saw so a lot this, of criticism about her performance, and I'm like, really? She's, like, the honest one. <laughs> I think she's really leaning into it, and it's, like, really, like, melodramatic, which, I mean, it's cats. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, 
I, it's a little bit like she's trying to do the Anne Hathaway thing from uh, Les Mis, where, you know, that, like, one song. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, that's why she won that Oscar. <laughs> like, I want but... someone to make a movie for Jennifer Hudson and Anne Hathaway as, like, a redemption for their time with Tom Hooper. I know. Which, yeah, I, which again, I'm not blaming them for the, the quality of the films. I just think they're very talented. <laughs> I guess at some point Anne Hathaway was in talks to play Grizabella. I'm but very glad that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, and Hugh Jackman was offered a role, um, but he didn't take it. <laughs> As Grizabella? Um, no, no it, just said, it just says Hugh Jackman was offered a role. <laughs> well, after Greatest Showman, you can only go up from there. Is Spielberg, like, one of the worst producers in Hollywood? Uh, I don't know if I'm at liberty to say, but yes. Because he's, I mean, there was, like, that run in the 80s where he was, like, touching lots of good shit, but they were all kind of, like, Spielberg-feeling films. Mm -hmm. And now you see what he's, like, he produces, and it's, like, garbage. (laughs) Yeah, I, I, I think he just slaps his name on stuff that his buddies make sometimes. Or I mean, there's this. definitely that, but but this is one where it's like he got the rights to Cats in like the '90s and wanted to do a cartoon version, and then his cartoon studio went bankrupt, <laughs> and so I was like, oh okay, sorry, Steve. But then he like still had the rights, so it feels like he was like, well, I've been sitting on him for this long. I better get fucking paid, <laughs> and yeah, and then that's what happened. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, what what else did he? Because like executive producer is not like, you know, everyone kind of knows that's not really a hands on kind of yeah. deal. Um, it's like uh, Kevin Smith is an executive producer on Good Will Hunting. Yeah, like that's not. <laughs> and it, and I believe the extent of his uh, involvement was that he took the script to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about things that don't yeah. age well. Oh, ho, ho. Um, I'm surprised he didn't have something to do with this. Kevin Smith? <laughs> no, no, Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> uh, this feels like something he would have his name attached to. No, he he would have had it in hiding for ten years and then released a butchered, more butchered version of it after several guess, yeah. uh, extended reshoot periods. I'm looking up the producing credits of. He's only officially a producer on an American tale, Five Will Goes West, Memoirs of a Geisha, Flags of Our Fathers, and Letters from Iwo Jima, which were like the two Clint Eastwood World War II movies he did back to back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super 8. That makes sense. And the, and the Hundred Foot Journey. The hell is that? I believe it's... Is that the one about a restaurant? <laughs> I, I've never heard of that film. I think it's about two restaurants across the street from each other. Oh, okay. And, like, one is, like, an uh, Indian restaurant, and one is an, a, a, a white person restaurant. <laughs> oh. And there's conflict, but then, like, the two young people at each independent restaurant, like, love each other. Oh, so it's Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Okay. Which also, someone did a fucking... There's a fucking great comedy <laughs> short film called The West Bank Story, which is a... It's a parody of West Side Story, and it's about two competing restaurants. One is, like, the Jewish restaurant. One is the Palestinian restaurant. And it's, like, a parody of, like, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. <sighs> which sounds like it could be terrible, but it definitely falls on... A, it, it, it definitely handles it a lot better than you'd expect. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> including, including, just pay attention to which character is the one that's supposed to bring down the wall between the two restaurants. All right, all right I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I have not seen it since college, so it maybe hasn't aged super well, <laughs> but... I remember thinking in college, like I was like, "Oh wow, that was actually something." Oh, uh, non-credited producer roles. Um, the turning from this year, twenty twenty. Did you see that? He 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 did that. Uh, well, he tried to because you know Spielberg's always trying to go back to like doing a horror type thing eventually, yeah. right? 
that was kind of going to be the thing. And then it just sat in like development hell for so long. And it ended up being directed by Floria Sigismondi, who's a, a decent director. The movie, the movie's not great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I heard the movie wasn't good. No, no. Uh, but, um, you, you can see why the project like attracted Spielberg, uh, and which is obviously more interesting than anything happening on screen in cats right now. Uh, yeah. as we're talking about, but, uh, well, this is the part where it's like, she's really supposed to just descend and like add this nonsense with McCavity again. <laughs> Does he land on his balls? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find no. out. No, no, he just he just lands on the statue. Up oh, now, he's up there. Yeah, and I guess that is. Does he die up there, or is he out of magic? Is that like what is that? Why? What even was his magic? Like what was that? Was it all catnip? I I think so. Oh hey, we made it to daytime. Yay, and... Buster for Jones is still eating food. Everyone loves the Buster for Jones. <laughs> and now we get to, to gyrate in peace and sing Oh my god, Buster for Jones looks terrible in that shot. Yeah, that, that look, doesn't look like a human form. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm glad we did this. Yeah, no, this was fun. Yeah. This is fun. Even though we, we um, basically did run out of things to talk about like 10 minutes in. Yeah. Yeah, because... Oh, no, we, we actually did pretty good considering. <laughs> um, but... This would be a yeah, perfect it, film if it was like an hour and a half. Yeah, 90-minute Cats is probably what you want to see of this disaster. Yeah, I, th I think this ah! needs a fan edit. <laughs> <laughs> this is when it's just like, oh, shit. Yeah, I remember just, like, bursting in the theater, like, with laughter. Yeah. Or maybe a scream. I, think, I can't I, really remember. I just love the amount of people walked out of it and were like, fucking Judy Dutch tells us a cat is not a dog. Is that what the fucking thing was about? <laughs> All right. So this is the final quote. Mm. I love this idea that this is how you address a cat. For I, Tom Hooper. Must admit, I have actually tried this. Tried bowing down to a cat and saying, Oh, cat, just in the slight hope that this might unleash the cat to talk to me. It hasn't worked. It hasn't yet worked. But I will continue trying. Keep trying, Tom. <laughs> um, never lose that spark. Can't... Yeah, never lose that creative <laughs> spark that leads to this. Yeah, so if 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 you're an up and coming like artist, you're, you're you're stretching your creative legs and muscles, and you ever concerned like you know I don't know if I have it like the actual professionals. Just listen to to that. I I cannot wait for you to look up the Tom Hooper quotes for cats and realize oh, everything is a lie. Your your creative spark, I promise, is just as important. <laughs> And probably as insane as an actual professional filmmaker or artist. Just, just do you, just do you. That's all I gotta say. Cause, uh, wow. Well, I, all I've learned today is that I'm definitely buying the Cats Blu-ray. Yep. <laughs> Which I never thought I would. But <laughs> oh no, no, I fully intended to. I just, I just have not yet. Yeah, no, I honestly didn't expect to for like a while. At least, like I was like, "Oh, it's three dollars." All right, <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of waiting for that, but now it's like I gotta listen to this commentary. Yeah, that that sounds incredible. The I hope Tom Hooper doesn't own cats. Like, I hope he's. You hope he disowns it. Like, no, no, I, I, I'm saying I hope he does not own any pet cats. Oh, <laughs> I don't want him being around cats, <laughs> trying to get them to talk to him. Just all day. Hey, hey, Tom, you're going to have a lot of free time to do that in the, in the future. <laughs> well, no, because the problem with Tom Hooper is that apart from Cats, all of his movies have been a success. Yeah, but this one was like such a train wreck. I feel like he's going to like he's going to have to eat some humble pie a little bit. Oh, but no, no, for sure. Next, it's going to whatever's next. It's going to be something incredibly small. Yeah. yeah. Like he's going to do he's going to either go back to television or. I mean, he had the, he did like his dark materials like the next year, 
or at least it aired the next year. It it actually started the same year as Cats, and now it's on its second season. Or I guess now it'll be on its third season. I don't know if it's even still continuing or whatever, but like... It's okay. It's very it's very solid. I like those books a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a it's a much better adaptation than the other one. Okay. Um, but even with Lin Manuel Miranda, <laughs> yeah. Every, everyone what? everyone loves them. I don't know what you're talking about. And I think a big problem with that is just like the budget's not there. Oh, did they leave her human hand in? I think I saw her human. Oh hand. yeah, Judy Dench's human hand has been like visible almost in the entirety of this finale. I thought they fixed it. I thought like there was all that talk about like them going back and fixing it. I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. I'm pretty sure I just saw it. Um, wow. Mm-hmm. Well, God bless you, Judy Dench. <laughs> and God bless America. <laughs> no. For all our faults, for all our faults, we did not make Tom Hooper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, her balloon's still going up, I guess. Yep, still going into the clouds. So you open on the shot of the cat face. I, the, Oh, wow, that's a cat oh. face. And then it just... Yeah, so you open on the, the cat face at night, and you, you close on the cat face at dawn. And I just assume that this is how cats spend every night of their lives now. Yeah, um, congratulations to everyone involved. <laughs> Except for Tom Hooper. Uh. Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber, I'm, I hope you're very proud. Uh, he is uh, not. Don't sh- look up his quotes about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I remember him not being happy with it. James Corden got top billing? Oh, that's insulting. No, fuck this oh, it's, movie. It's, it's alphabetical, I guess. Mm, but, but So by default, it's James Corden. Oh, that's, that's, that's like evil. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty funny. That's, that's... <laughs> That's very, very funny. What a beautifully oh. cursed film. Yeah, what uh, what trash. What 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 true and honest to goodness trash that this movie is. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I loved it. <laughs> it's it's too long, but I loved it. It's yeah, it's uh yeah. Um I cannot wait to listen to the commentary track on this thing. Um, I have now seen this more than Rise of Skywalker. Same. I will now be purchasing the Blu-ray version of Cats before I purchase a Blu-ray copy of Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> Which is funny because, like, I think on the the Rise of Skywalker episode, I was like, "Oh yeah, that'll make like a that'll look good like on on home media." And Cats cut does to, not. Cut but to... I will watch it again. <laughs> cut to uh, our commentary for. Rise of Skywalker, where we all lost our minds. No, no. Oh my god, yeah. Huh? We did that in the beginning of this year. We're closing out the year with <laughs> with cats. Yep. So, you know, everything comes full circle. Everything. Uh, everything. On, it's all... It's true, all of it. <laughs> on that note... A Universal Pictures presentation. Mm. In a perfect world pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Working title, <laughs> Amblin. So on th- oh my god, there's so many. I, I, I'm I still not getting used to the fact that every movie now takes 37 companies to get made. I know, I know. Oh, look, now there's an actual fun logo. <laughs> Yay, because this movie was, was such a ball. But if you want to have a ball, Matt, where can the people find you online? Well, fuck all that for a second. Oh my god. I just want to say, this has been a fucked up year. <laughs> I don't think I'm anyone pointing it out. Uh, like uh, I think we're all aware of it. I think we're all having a terrible year, which is like the first time I think we can all really say that. Like even years where like bad shit happened or like all things, it's like well I kind of had an okay year. <laughs> this has been a truly, truly awful year, and I'm glad it's ending. And hopefully something will go all right next year. <laughs> At some point, but one of the few things that kept me sane during all of this was doing this podcast with you, Diego. Oh, thank you. And I'm very grateful that we get to do this. I'm glad you let me come on here and just babble like an idiot. <laughs> that that I know in X number of years you will have to distance yourself from me in my comments <laughs> when you go on to have a successful career doing whatever the fuck. <laughs> and I'm I'm very grateful to anyone who listens. 
and anyone who donates to the Patreon to listen to shit early. Well, thank you for that. I, I am honored and proud to do these with you. Or maybe not proud, but it is a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. It is. Oh, okay. su- no, no, no. That's where the line is. No, 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 no. It, it has been a blast to do all of these. Um, I I genuinely can't wait to, go, to get back to the retrospectives uh, and the, the other. I know you have something else in mind that I don't want to talk about now because I, I know you, you're, you're still working out the I details. To, but... I have to. No, Diego hasn't heard the pitch yet, so he has a chance to say no <laughs> in case he doesn't like it. But I, I am genuinely looking forward to more of it. I appreciate your comments and your friendship. And uh, I promise to only distance myself from you if you somehow turn incredibly right wing, which I just don't think is in the cards. <laughs> so thank you for that. All right. Well, we'll see. Yeah, the river doesn't contain a bend. I know. I've I've seen some people go down rabbit holes this year, so you never know. But Matt, yeah. now on that note, where can the people find the rest of your ramblings? I'm at Emperor OTN1 at Twitter.com. And you can find me at the Diego Crespo. Check out the Waffle Press on Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, and Patreon where you can check out other commentary tracks. It's the only place you're going to get the Rise of Skywalker commentary, so check that out. <laughs> yeah, that's never being released. Yeah, it's too mean. I will... Yeah, it's uh, very harsh, and we get angry. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. We just lost our minds. Um, so thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We have been professionally unprofessional. And at least you have beautiful ghosts. No. Thanks. Thanks, Taysway. <laughs>